Well, folks, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can wire up both DC and ECC controllers to the same track, allowing you to toggle between both modes and allowing you to optimize performance on both your DC and ECC locomotives. Now, if you're like me, you probably have a variety of both DC and ECC locomotives. This is especially common if you've been collecting locomotives for a while. And uh, to be honest, there's not one type of controller which can really suit them best than the controller that they're designed for. If you're running old DC locomotives on DCC power, it can be very hard on the motors because there is always power in the track. It's especially hard on them at an idle because uh, they're still gaining power, but they're not circulating it. So uh, it can uh, easily burn out the motor. If you have a really old uh, DC locomotive with a really worn out motor, there's a fine chance you'll burn out the commutator or armature. And the same goes for DCC locomotives. You can operate them on DC power usually, but there's always a chance you'll burn out the decoders. So optimally, what you want to do is have a system where you can provide the power which is best suited for whatever it is you're operating. For old locomotives like this lifelike one, for example, it runs just fine on DC power. And I know some people may argue for just putting decoders in all your DC locomotives, but really old locomotives uh, don't always react so well to decoders and will usually wind up burning them out since their motors take in a lot of current. Uh, as well as uh, old locomotives like this are only worth about $15, so it really would be silly to put a uh, fancy decoder in it when uh, it would be worth less than the locomotive is. It's not to say these old locomotives aren't good though especially if they have sentimental value. And in my case, I just have this simple switch in the table and I just switch it to whichever power I want for whatever I'm operating. And it changes the power in the track from whatever controller I have it set to. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys how to wire up. To show you guys just how to wire this all up, I've got a basic example, which includes your basic DC controller as well as a basic old DC locomotive as well as a fancy DCC controller and a fancy DCC locomotive. Now to get these to work together, we're going to use this. This will be the heart of your operation and it's what you're wiring up. This is a DT DP switch. You can pick these up at hardware stores or hobby shops or you can even salvage them out of old controllers. One thing that's important, especially if you salvage it though, is that you remove any cross wires which uh, can be useful in other situations but in this one uh, will give you problems and potentially burn out a controller. So make sure there is no wires connecting anything at the bottom here. With that, we're going to get around to wiring this all up. Now all the wires you see here just have basic leads. This one goes to your track, this one goes to the DC controller, and this one goes to our DCC controller. So how we're going to wire this up is the two outside prongs from each of the positive and negative sides will go on the outside, and the track will go on the inside. I'm going to do this piece in real time. We'll start by putting some flux onto the wires. And uh, what flux does is it just kind of allows the solder to heat up and flow better. It also apparently cleans the uh, wires. It will just help the connection be a lot better. And it is definitely worth it if you want to get a proper soldering connection. Anyways, we're going to bring our soldering iron up to uh, our wire here. We're just going to get some solder actually on the wire. And there we go, we got our leads tinted. And now, uh, this bit's so self-explanatory. Solder these right to the leads. I'll try not to burn myself while I do this part. There's one, whoops, spoke too soon. Let that cool off a little more this time. All right, so there's one. Let me just do the same on this side. Have to make sure that we don't get this wire overly close to the other tab there, otherwise we're gonna have a short. And there we go, there's the other one. And I've just gone ahead and soldered the wires from our DC controller up. You just do it the same way to the uh, outside prongs. 
And now what we're going to do is solder our final wires on here. I'll just solder our red wire on this side. And now we've got the other side hooked up, so you can see we've got all the wires all hooked up. And now we get to test this whole system out. And now that we've got it all wired up, it's ready for testing. So we'll start with the DC side. And uh, as you can see, our little uh, Bachman engine as well as the DCC engine both start up. Again, I don't want to do this for long because it's kind of not so great for the DCC engine. But you can see they both go. Um, the track's a bit dirty, that's why that one didn't move. But uh, We've got them both wired up, but now here's the magic. I just turn on power, and you can see we've got power in our uh, DCC engine. You can hear by the sound, and we've got power in our DC engine. Although it's idling, and that's uh, not so good. But you can see it's getting power as well. So I'll just shut that off because it's kind of noisy. But that's how you wire them both up. One more quick thing to note is that if the wires out of your DCC controller uh, happen to be like Bachman's where they just end with the terminal, just clip the wire and you'll get these nice raw wires which you can solder to stuff. Well folks, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this was a little bit of a random video, uh, but before I discovered this years ago, it was always trickier running my DC and DCC trains all on the same controller, so I was very thankful to have discovered this. And I thought I'd share with you guys today so that some other people might be able to put this simple method to use. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching.